Hey, eighth grade, welcome to the seventh of eight different uh, lessons that we're going to be doing, exploring the differences between liberals and conservatives in key issue areas. Today, we're going to be looking at energy and environmental issues. And the two topics that we're going to be doing is one, should we expand the use of domestic drilling of fossil fuels in order to meet our energy demand over renewable ones? And number two, uh, is climate change a man made phenomenon? And should the U.S. take drastic measures to slow down its effects? All right, we're going to start first with domestic drilling. And should the U.S. expand uh, use of existing domestic fuel sources over wind and solar and water alternative renewable energy solutions? Um, on this end, the uh, arguing the affirmative will be the conservatives who are saying yes we should we should drill here drill now and pay less and uh, arguing in the negative will be the liberals who are going to say nope let's go with alternative energy so let's go with the conservatives first who say yes we should expand domestic drilling and use of uh, existing domestic uh, fossil fuel resources they're going to argue that the United States has an enormous amount of untapped natural energy resources, coal, gas, oil, all under our feet. And we have enough of those fossil fuel resources um, that come from organic materials um, that are embedded deep in the earth. We have enough of those underneath our feet to keep America powered at its current levels or even above it for more than a century, uh, well over a century. And innovations like hydraulic fracking and directional drilling have allowed us to tap into this energy in ways that we never uh, thought possible, um, you know, even a couple decades ago. And we see that um, utilizing this energy, thanks to this technology, has allowed our country to become energy independent. That means that we rely less and less, especially on foreign oil and other foreign energy resources. Historically, uh, the U.S. has had to rely on foreign oil throughout much of our history. And a lot of times that oil had been coming from areas of the world that were antagonistic to the U.S.'s foreign policy agenda. And it had been used as leverage against our country with embargoes and boycotts to try to force our nation to uh, go against our principles uh, to be used aggressively at, against us. We saw huge fluxes in uh, energy prices as a result of this, which negatively affected our um, economy. <coughs> uh, instead now, with energy independence, we don't have to be prone to that pressure anymore. And ignoring all these resources is like ignoring a pile of trillions of dollars. We have trillions of dollars that can be fed into our economy uh, that we have claimed to, and yet many people want us just to ignore. Conservatives say we shouldn't ignore it. We should drill here. We should drill now. And in the end, we'll pay less. Because expanding domestic drilling in the U.S., they argue, um, will ex boost the U.S. economy, will boost security. There are many areas around the U.S., around our coastline, um, and uh, federally held lands that drilling is not allowed, where there's a, an abundance of resources available. And expanding and extracting these natural resources will bring many high-paying jobs into our economy. It will boost um, on, uh, our unemployment numbers, making less and less people have to rely on the government. Um, it will uh, drive down our energy costs, so this will end up saving the average American family and American companies billions of dollars. Um, if you own a trucking company, reducing energy costs saves you so much money. If you run an office building, saving on energy costs saves you so much money. So tapping into these expansive domestic resources will also allow our government to be prepared for an emergency. We've seen with hurricanes striking the Gulf Coast, where a lot of our oil comes from, that if we are able to tap into these resources, we can have more emergency uh, energy. So that way, if there is a crisis, like a natural disaster, we won't see our energy prices suddenly spike and become unaffordable. And 
they're going to argue that alternative energy resources have a lot of limitations and they're just an ineffective energy solution at this time. We need to really, fossil fuel is what our infrastructure is based on. We should expand what we have um, before just entirely switching to an unproven form of technologies. Wind turbines, or lion wind, it's just, you know, is, isn't always windy. And there's a lot of negative effects on the environment. They affect migratory birds. They re require a great deal of open space. They generate a lot of noise pollution. Um, solar energy relies on sunlight. Uh, sun isn't out 24-7. Even during the day, if it's cloudy, you're not getting that energy. Um, and during the winter, there's less and less of it. It's a limited form of energy. Um, and again, requires a great deal of open space. And like wind turbines, they're very costly to manufacture and don't produce enough electricity to meet America's huge demand. They just, our demand for energy uh, in the U.S. is not able to be met. Even if we went to all wind and all solar, you're going to see prices go up because we don't make enough energy from those resources in order to feed our demand. So the supply will get less, that will make prices go up. And the technology improvements that we've seen in fossil fuel extraction um, in the past 10 years have made it far less detrimental and impactful to, to the environment. The idea that every time we drill for oil, it's uh, this natural disaster, or every time we frack for gas, it's this natural disaster, is a fallacy. Um, and there are other forms of carbon emissions other than fossil fuels. Um, farming. Farming is a huge contributor to uh, carbon emissions. Um, we can't, you know, pass a law that stops, you know, cows from passing wind. The methane that they produce in, in doing that natural function is actually a big part of, you know, why we have carbon. So if we go and just cut out fossil fuels, there's still going to be carbon emitted at a, a level that is, you know, damaging to our environment. So don't just blame fossil fuels, say the conservatives. The liberals are going to say, um, no, we shouldn't expand domestic, domestic drilling. It's a really bad idea. Um, extracting and using, burning fossil fuel is the leading cause of pollution, is the leading factor leading to climate change, and it is had multiple horrible environmental disasters in our history. Um, removing coal, natural gas, oil, all damage the environment. It, it, whether it's mountaintop removal of coal, uh, whether it's um, the ripping of oil or gas from, from the ground underneath, it has an effect on the environment in the areas around it. And especially if you're talking about opening this up into pristine, preserved wildlands that um, are protected by our, our, our nation and our national parks and our national lands, you could be not only damaging the, uh, the environment, but in da damaging very precious uh, environments that are fragile and would be destroyed very easily by such things. Um, Fracking and drilling cause seismic disruptions. If you look at Oklahoma, they rarely experienced er earthquakes 20 years ago. Now they experience earthquakes pretty often. Why? Because of the level of fracking and uh, removal of natural gas from under the ground. That's a problem. Um, we see in the areas where uh, extraction of fossil fuels is taking place, health problems skyrocket for the people that live in those areas. But also the burning of fossil fuels contributes to health problems. Making Burning fossil fuel makes air pollution, which heightens respiratory issues. We've seen the fact that respiratory issues are a fragile thing right now. And doing anything that makes that weakens people's uh, respiratory systems is not a good idea. We see uh, burning of fossil fuels lead to a rise in asthma, for example. Um, and fossil fuels, relying on fossil fuels, lead to environmental disasters that then have economic disasters. Um, the BP oil spill um, off of the Louisiana coast a few years ago cost the U.S. hundreds of billions of dollars. 
uh, to try to clean up, and it's still not fully cleaned up. The amount of damage that that did to that pristine environment is overwhelming. Um, if we look at areas where there's fracking that is taking place, people literally have natural gas coming into their water to their house. They go to turn on the water and flame comes, flames come out. That's not a good thing. Um, oil spills, natural gas explosions, all these things follow um, where we see the removal of fossil fuels um, and the use of fossil fuels. Polluting of our river resources, our soil resources, all those things come from using fossil fuels. Carbon emissions um, are contributing and are the leading factor leading to the rise in global temperatures at historic rates that's leading to climate change. And this, our reliance on fossil fuels is generating a worldwide avoidable disaster that threatens not just the United States, but the entire human race. Liberals will argue expanding the use of this dangerous, horrible form of energy is a not a good idea. Not the solution. Instead, we should be investing our economic resources to expanding alternative energy resources. Wind, water, solar, um, and hydrogen fuel cells, geothermal. There's many different forms of it. And the number one way to make sure that we don't have to rely on foreign fossil fuels, which conservatives, liberals will argue, are right. We should rely on foreign fossil fuels. So, make sure we don't rely on fossil fuels, period. Then we won't have to rely on foreign ones. It's pretty simple. Um, if we use government funds to develop alternative energy, that will help our economy. It will create millions of jobs as well, green jobs. And these are jobs that can't be exported, can't be uh, shipped overseas. They would have to be done here in the U.S., um, alternative energy costs are steady um, and doesn't leave you as prone to wild swings in costs as the supply of fossil fuels goes down. Natural disaster strikes, price of oil skyrockets, um, or the price of natural gas can skyrocket. These prices are steady and much more reliable for our economy. And once again, fossil fuel disasters have cost our nation billions and trillions, and will continue to cost our nation billions and trillions as long as we continue to rely on them. We will have to have massively expensive uh, toxic cleanups. We will have to see tourism in areas destroyed, industry after industry when there is a massive disaster like this destroyed. The one way to avoid that, all those things, is to not rely on fossil fuels. Um, you're not you're not going to see um, many people killed by you know a solar panel spill, but many things die when there's an oil spill. And alternative energy resources are renewable and sustainable. America's energy needs will continue to rise, and we're eventually going to run out of fossil fuels. It's not an unlimited amount, but renewable energy never runs out. There's always going to be the movement of air and water. Not always at the same rate, but it's always going to happen. And by utilizing it in areas where it happens the most, will allow us to, allow us to get the, uh, the maximum amount of energy. The sun will continue to shine for billions of years. That is a renewable form of energy that produces no emissions. But burning fossil fuels to match what our needs are for energy is just not sustainable. We'll damage our environment to the point where we'll just not be able to repair itself. And then where will we be? So that's both sides of the energy debate. Next, you're going to do climate change.